I want to welcome you to our program today, and we have two very special guests. We have Tony and Alexandra Fleege this day, and they are missionaries. And I want to welcome you to the program today. Thank you. Thank you so and much. And so you are currently missionaries going to France. We are in France. We're not going there. We've been there for now for four years. Four years in France. And started in September, yes. Four years. And my understanding is, is that you have been missionaries other places as well. We have. We have been uh, in Brazil for four years together. Mm -hmm. uh, the ministry has been more of uh, Bible schools and, and churches. And uh, now we're emphasizing evangelism and healing. Evangelism and healing. Yes, okay. sir. Yeah. yeah, so where did you grow up or where are you from originally? Well, I was actually, I was born in Brazil. In Brazil, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. And um, I was raised in California. And uh, then in, I went to Bible school in Tulsa, Oklahoma, Bible school called Rama. And, and afterwards, I felt like the Lord told me to go back to Brazil. And then we spent some years there together. Yeah. And, you know, that's, that's, we might go back there still. You know, we still go back every year, but, you know. I have a heart for the world. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. when you think about our Lord's calling, I mean, God, for, you know, for God so loved the world oh, and so go. that love continues to mm. to go out mm -hmm. in his people mm -hmm. shown as a light going into the world and so Brazil so you so you mentioned that you were doing some ministries in churches and s schools and mm -hmm. yeah so that was kind of the emphasis there but now how about France how, how do you go well, ministry in France, is it kind of the same thing or is it different? Oh, Brazil and France are very different. The, 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 you know, the harvest fields, every field is different, you know. Farmers have different fields and some fields are ripe, some, well the harvest is ripe, but it's just different crops. And so the spiritual atmosphere there is a lot different, um, whereas Brazil, there's, a, there's revival, lots of growth, evangelical growth there. And whereas Europe, we, um, there's been a lot of people who have planted and so sowed. a lot more seed than we have. You know, you know. years and years. And so we, it's time for harvest to come into France. It's time for the outpouring of the Spirit and to, yeah. for, for the people to experience the, the power and the love of the Lord. Um, so the ministry difference, a lot of what we're, I think the Lord is wanting to, to to know is the people to know is the love of the Lord and to know like Paul says I didn't come to you with eloquent speech but with power and demonstrations and, and so we we we're believing for the, the 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 glory of God to be poured out in France and healing the Lord yeah. showed us that like there's going to be a lot of healings taking place there a revival you know obviously not just with us but there's um, you know, people have given their lives in that country and have sowed a lot and mm. sometimes haven't seen a whole lot. Yes. But, uh, you know, we believe it's time for, for God's harvest to come forth. There are hungry people there, hungry people to know the Lord, hungry people to, to, to know there's, there's something out there. Maybe they don't know yes. Him by Jesus or by the Lord, but there's hungry people that need to come to know Jesus. Yeah. And the spirit within continues to search. Yeah. You know, understanding that there is that well, God created us for being in relationship with Him, and yeah. God created us to to be a to know that there is something beyond ourselves. But because of our sin, that's been lost. Mm -hmm. But yet we continue to search. Yes. And we mm -hmm. continue to hunger. We continue. Yes. You know what I find to be interesting about you know your France. You know that. You hear that there's mission work going on in France. Well, I'm sure there's got to continually be mission work going on everywhere, really. Yes, yes. You know, but I've always thought of France, you know, as we look yep. at church history, right, right. Yeah. as being such a, yes. as having such a rich mm -hmm. history. And so I just kind of thought, well, France, I thought everybody there would probably be Christian by now, but, but that's not the case. It it's, uh, no. you know, right now, if you were to go to France, you would find that, that Christianity is not really all that strong. No, actually it's one of the least evangelized nations of the world. Is that right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and uh, you know, because of a lot of religious wars that have been fought in that area, 
they became um, known as a, a secular nation. They wanted that so that they wouldn't, it, that, that just kind of became part of their, uh, their culture that they are a secular nation and purposely leaving things of, um, of God out because of all the, the you know, there's been a lot of wrong stuff done there in the name of religion and, and but I believe that they need to see, you know, the real love of God. A lot of people have tasted before. Mm. Well, that makes sense, you know, because I always wonder, well, how do you go from being a, such a strong Christian nation to where now, you know, people are secular, mm. and but yet searching, and I, that's true. When you look at the history, there have been so many wars fought over, in a sense, religion, mm -hmm. that they're feeling like we just don't want religion here anymore. And isn't that sad? Yes. When you think mm -hmm. of like Christianity, that yes. we're to be of love and to be peacemakers yeah, yeah. and but to say, well, our, our nation is so war, has been war-torn, so much of it under, you know, like you um, yeah. mentioned, Alexandra, in the name of Jesus. We did it all in the name of Jesus, so to speak. Yes. Yeah, so, but you know, God turns that around, and, and uh, there, like I said, there's people hungry for his word, there's hungry for, to know the Lord, and then there's just people that really don't know what they're hungry for, but they're desperate, like anywhere else, and, and need Jesus. And, and we believe part of the reason we're there is to, you know, help love the people through, you know, through God's healing, through God's word, through, mm -hmm. through, you know, God's interested in helping people all the time. He's wanting to help people. And that's, you know, that's how we, you know, his love towards us is so great. And uh, so we believe that's, that's why we're there is, is to bring attention to the gospel of Jesus Christ and through healing. It's when you, when you mention the word healing, mm -hmm. you know, God will bring healing. In what ways? Is it the healing of the past? Is it the healing of, of people's uh, bodies? Or is it the healing of, or is it more of a holistic healing of body, mind, and spirit? How, how would you describe oh. healing when people, when you, when you I'm feel I'm talking like about sickness and sickness. disease, pain, people's bodies. We've seen a lot of people heal through, um, through you know, through the word and through you know praying for the sick, you know God promises that in His, in his word and and, uh, and I've heard it said that like healing is almost like a call to salvation. So sometimes people will come just to get prayer because they're sick and not, they don't even know the Lord. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They don't know the Lord. They don't know anything about God, but but they want to be well. They want to be better, and then they end up getting healed. And it's kind of it's a it's a call for them to it's okay. A sign well, and a wonder that follows those that believe. Then come on and come to Jesus now. Mm -hmm. Come and receive the Lord, because he, you know. Yeah. So now, so Tony, now did, did you know, what's your background? Then did you grow? Where did you grow up at? I grew up in the in this area. In the, the Dubuque Menom area. Yes. Okay. In Menominee on the on the farm. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. so, as I think of the two of you, you know, the Holy Spirit is so shut up in your bones, so to speak. I mean, <laughs> you sure. just are Holy Spirit driven to the yeah, point yeah, of yeah. going to other nations yes. and proclaiming and healing and really yes. getting, yes. you know, these, you know, direction from the Holy Spirit to yeah. know that yeah. this is what the Holy Spirit is calling us to this place yes. and for these, per, for these uh, mm -hmm. specific purposes, so That's to speak. Correct. And so I, yeah, so, like, where did you, your faith, uh, you know, I think a lot of people are just so, you know, you talk about that hunger. Yeah. Saying, you know, we look at, you know, people like Tony and Alexandra, and we, it's just like, we would like that, we'd like to have a faith, we'd like to have that spirit directing us in our lives. And, you know, how, how did that happen for the two of you, you know, as far as your coming to the Lord and growing in the Lord and you know, just, you know, walking daily and, and knowing that God is directing us in this way. Is there a, you know, a, you know like a little story as far as, uh, you, or is it maybe it's... <laughs> well, that's for me. I, you know, I, I didn't know the Lord. I was raised in a denomination and, it, you know, good people, but I didn't really, I didn't, pers I, I believe there are people in that denomination that know the Lord, but I didn't. And, you know, I was raised in... Um, private schools um, in this religion and, and uh, then one day a friend of mine gave me this book called I Went to Hell by Kenneth Hagin and 
and after I read it, it's just a little, little tiny book, I, I called him, I said, oh my gosh, I want to receive the Lord. <laughs> you know, I want to receive Jesus, and that's how I came to know the Lord. And, uh, and then, you know, I kept, I went to, I, I started going to a church in California, my home church is called Heart of the Bay Christian Center in, in, uh, in Hayward, California, and I ended up uh, uh, knowing more of God's Word, and mm -hmm. And then went to Bible school, and that's in, in Bible school. Then you end up knowing more mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and, and wanting more, and, and I guess um, that's where I found out about you know that the Lord might want me to do something for Him. I had no idea about any of that. I thought I, had, I just thought I wanted to know more about God's Word and about the Lord. That's that's why I went, but I didn't realize you know that there might be something God wanted me to do for him. And that's what I ended up happening at, at Bible school, is realizing that, oh my gosh, I think there's more yeah. still, yeah. Yeah, going to Bible school and being connected to your church yeah. and growing daily in God's word. And, mm -hmm. you know, Tony, is that kind of similar or how would you describe you know, it? Mine was, um, you know, the Bible says, how can, how can you believe without a preacher? You, know, you need to hear the he need to hear the word, and so in 1991, uh, evangelist Lowell Lundstrom came to Dubuque here, and um, uh, and Walter Payton was given his testimony of his faith in Christ. And I want, as a young boy, you, 13 years old, you wanted to uh, come hear his testimony. But as afterwards, he gave the altar call to salvation, and so. It's, a seed was planted in my heart there, and the eternal, God's Word does not return void, and I didn't really continue in the Word. It's so important once you receive the Word, receive Christ, is to continue. But the Word of God does not return void, so many years passed until I was like 21. I started having that hunger and that desire, that searching, like, there's something more out there than than life, you know, then, you know, there's, then per, there's a purpose. And so when you start seeking for purpose, I think why you're here, what's your purpose, and that drew me into the Word of God. And in the Word of God, you get answers, and, and when you taste and see that God is good, you just want more. And so I just got addicted to the Word. Yeah. Oh, well, can't think of a better addiction. <laughs> yeah. yeah, than to be into God's Word and oh, that yeah. hunger and that thirst. And yeah. it's, and that's what's sad. I mean, that's the um, the true, genuine satisfaction of sure. our inner soul. Is, it is. You know, that's you know, if people are looking for, you know, what is it that can bring contentment and true joy and true fulfillment in life? It, it's the Lord. It is. Yeah. He is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we are always looking for substitutes or thinking that mm -hmm. this is what's going to do it or that's yeah. what's going to do it. I mean, you, you got more of the word in church, though, right? You just didn't get word. I mean, you got, you got. Word in church, right? Yeah. But it just shows the importance of evangelism. Yeah. You know, Lowell Lundstrom comes to town, and, and I've known, other, you know, I've met other people saying, well, the, you know, how do they become a Christian? Well, I went to, a, my wife dragged me to a Lowell Lundstrom <laughs> conference, and I, I received the Lord. And I'll tell you, and as I look at these, because some of them have been in my church, yeah. and I'll tell you, some of the strongest Christians. That's awesome. Yeah, isn't Praise that something? It yeah, is. That is awesome. Mm -hmm. That's encouraging. But that's why when you mentioned Lowell Lundstrom, it's just like, <laughs> he passed through this other community, yeah. and yeah. Yeah, he made a difference. So we're thankful for the evangelists and how important yeah. that is. And so... As I think about the two of you now, as you are, okay, so you, you know, you're called by God and you are, you really know that this is your calling is to yeah. go out into the world and to minister to people. And, and so that whole discernment process to say, well, God is calling us to go to Brazil or God is calling us to France. I mean, how did that, how did that go about, you know, as far as being called to France rather than being called to some other country at the time, you know, what kind of... What kind of led you to France, of all places? Yeah, uh, God so loved the world. Mm -hmm. You know, God didn't just love America, He loves the world. And so when you get His vision, get His perspective, you get your eyes off of yourself, you start looking beyond yourself. Mm -hmm. We need Christ here in Dubuque region area. We need Christ everywhere. And so God is sending people. He says the harvest is ripe, but the laborers are mm -hmm. few. And there's few laborers in Europe. And, uh, and so while I was there and ministering, traveling, uh, I was in a 
talking with a pastor as they were speaking. I just had a witness in the inside. This is what I need to do. Just mm -hmm. had to, to take that step to come over and to uh, help establish that church in, in, in a Bible school. And I was really surprised, honestly. I thought, seriously, this is... Because the first time we went together over there, you know, he, there were some things that kind of bugged him <laughs> about that place. <laughs> and I thought that, you know, I never actually thought, you know, that'd be the last place that he'd, you know, want to go live at. I mean, it, I, I think it's, you know, it's a beautiful place, but, but you know, sometimes, you know, first time we were there, we stayed in this tiny little place. He yeah. wasn't used to it. He's used to being like on a lot of big, spacious areas, big. It just, it wasn't a it was I should say it this way, it wasn't like something I was fleshly desiring. I, I really wasn't thinking about, about moving there or had a burden to go there or God put it in my heart years ago and finally I'm getting there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I was there three months late. I, I went there a few times and one time I was there, yeah. the Holy Spirit said, you know, like Philip, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. join yourself to this chariot. Uh -huh. you know, so in Philip, what did he do? He didn't stop and think about it. He ran. Mm -hmm. And he ran and joined himself to that chariot. Yeah. And, and yeah. so that's kind of the... So now we love it. You know, we, yeah. lo we love it there. Uh, it's, you know, the people have been really gracious to us. And, you know, God's given us favor. But uh, it's really interesting. Yeah, because it's not like... You know, we're just looking at a place and go, oh, let's go. You know, Paris. You, you're a missionary in Paris? <laughs> oh, you know, they're like, <laughs> Paris, you know. <laughs> it, it just, yeah, just, that, that, just, that sounds like funny sounds to people. Like, a, like really? Uh, set up my tent underneath the Eiffel Tower, right? <laughs> you know, how good is that? Right. Yeah, so that's, but that's the whole thing is that <laughs> we don't, we don't always, yeah, it's not like, well, I want to go here. It's, it's God directing to say, right, well, yeah. of all places, you know, you know, France, and, and that's the whole thing is that it's really, there's quite a need for mission work in France. And that's yeah. all I've been hearing lately is, you know, just how God has been calling people to go to France to, to be missionaries. And so, okay, so you, you get to France and you are going about ministry. How, how do you go about that? I mean, it's not like, oh, I think I'm going to head into that church over there. And I'm going to start preaching, and everybody's going to you know, stream in. That's not kind of how it goes. I mean, how, how do you go about uh, relationships? Mm -hmm. It's really relationships, the body of Christ, making connections, uh, talking with pastors, talking, just getting into the community, and becoming. The Bible says, "Become Paul. I become all things to all men, that I may win some." And getting into their community, and 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 uh, introducing yourself to pastors, and and developing those relationships. Relationships with pastors, okay, and so what's the advantage to that then, you know, getting to know pastors? And uh, well, the, the church, the body, edify, you know, to build up the church. Pastors there need help. They need, they're, they're, they're working and they're struggling and they, and they just need somebody to come alongside and, and encourage. Mm -hmm. And I have a gift, I have a calling, and I communicate to them what I have to offer. What, what can I bring yeah. to your church? This is what God's graced us with, and we want to be a blessing. And so once they get to know who you are and what you're about, then they start opening up, and then you start ministering to the people, and it's all about building up the yeah. local building up the well, okay, So you're working with the local churches, churches. Yeah. 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 and getting to know the pastors. Yeah. Yeah. and. Yeah. Yeah. And getting a sense of what the Spirit is calling, the Holy Spirit is yeah. calling you to do, mm -hmm. you know, based on, you know, how you can walk with and be supportive, and that, yeah. that's a, a real it's good uh, approach. It's an itinerant ministry. You know, honestly, we feel like we've received just as much as we've given, yeah. because people out there, there's no, it's, it seems like the Christians that are out there, maybe there's not as many as other places, but it seems like the ones that are, are very, like, consecrated and dedicated to the Lord, like our it's like you almost kind of have to be totally, yeah. uh, totally sold out. And, yeah. and that's a, been a blessing for us to see, you know, because we've been in places where mm -hmm. they really emphasize like prayer and fasting. And we're yes. like, wow, they do this a lot more than we do. You know, <laughs> you know? and we're like, and it's, it's a blessing to us because, you know, we have some things to give, but we've also received yeah. too because... Yeah. Uh, I think that that's how God designs His body is, you know, there's a mutual giving and receiving, and, and um, 
so it's helped us to grow also yeah. in, in knowledge of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So when you go there, I don't know, I just thought it's, <laughs> you know, dimly burning wick, our Lord will not quench, or a bruised reed, he yeah. will not break, meaning That's that there is a dimly burning wick there. Yeah. 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 I mean, there is a flame. Yes. Oh, yeah. And there is a reed. Yes. And so you're there to try to help get that, yeah, <laughs> to, to put some gasoline on that fire. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's it. That's, uh, that's good. That's exactly. That's yeah. exactly. The fire of the Holy Spirit is so important. It brings life to the body of Christ. And people need to have the, min the ministry of the Holy Spirit must be known. And so we minister a lot on the ministry of the Holy Spirit and healing. And, and that's, we help the people to understand that the, Holy, the third person of the Trinity is a person and, and he's there to help. And, you know, people get stirred up by remembering. And so the pastor's there and believers, if, you remi if I remind you, we can get stir each other up just reminding each other what God has said to us. And, mm -hmm. woo, you know, you stir up that flame, you stir up that fire. And we need to, we need to be strong. We, need to, we are the light of the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I think that's another thing that we like to do over there, really anywhere we go, is to help put a vision into people to go and, yeah. and, and have a, like a, a vision of the world, of missions all over, because, you know, there's a huge Francophone world that people speak French, and, you know, and we believe that God will send people from France all over the yes. world. We believe <coughs> God's raising up laborers. We've seen God do that in... Brazil, it's like, it's amazing how many missionaries are coming out of Brazil right now. And, um, and we believe God's doing the same thing all over the world. And part of that is in France, you know, he, he there's, you know, there's people there that, that have a calling to missions. And uh, probably part of why we're there also is, you know, the world is great. It's big and it's full of people yeah. and, you know, yeah. I think that more and more we see that it's like it's not one ministry or one church that's going to do it all, obviously. Yeah. And everybody has a part. And that helps us, helps people too, because I think when people feel useful, it's a lot, it's a lot more gratifying and satisfying for them too. And I think God put that in people. Because yeah. sometimes we've seen Christians that are just frustrated. And it's not that they're not good people. And it's not that they don't love God, but it's just like they're not, they're not feeling useful, useful, and they're not giving. And so I think that there's a, there's a constant flow of needs to be giving either of your time, of your talent, of your love, of, your, of, of the word, whatever God's given you that you could give. And, and I think that brings a lot of um, life to mm. people and, and, and joy and, and satisfaction. Yeah. So when we'd like to help people also to have opportunities to give and to go and to go and where, mm -hmm. you know, we have a, a few friends out there that go, and it's, yeah. it's great to see it, yeah. Isn't that something? That's wonderful. Yeah, so, you, you, so you're there, and you are working with the pastor then, and so is it just kind of working with the pastor, then determining no, well, what we got many pastors. Many not, pastors that not, you're working yeah, with. Yeah, we're not and just so is there So as you work with the pastor, is there like a specific evangelistic effort of how you go about your work? Are, are you working within the church or are you out we, in the those, street? I mean, we do, we um, do street ministry okay. with other ministries that do there. We've done open air preaching under the Eiffel Tower. Well, you have. So yeah. send it pretend on <laughs> we, we, we have. We wasn't too far off. No, we, okay. we help a YWAM <laughs> outreach when we're there. And, and join with yeah. other ministries that okay. are doing that yeah. work. Yeah. So you are, you know, in and amongst the people. Yeah. And you... What do you do? Just go up to people then, then, and uh, start visiting, or do you have Not like a really. tract, or or do you have like yeah. a, a little preaching post that you set up in hopes that people for come outside listen? Yeah. You know. evangelism? Uh, the ministry that we're youth with the mission, they have youth come all over. They come in. They rent. We had they they were able to uh, have the permit for the square, and so they had dancers, they had singers, they had all these. Uh, mm -hmm. Things that would attract people. Attract people. people. And then they'll okay. have, then they'll they have, had preachers pre I'll come preaching. up for like five yeah. minutes and just give a Holy Ghost word, you know, that would right. be able to just set, plant the seed. And mm -hmm. so that's an area. And then, you know, we. And you have handed out tracks we, before. We, we, we do the that ministry effective. of the, like, 
you know, young believers it and is stuff. The seed um, we we help train churches that have evangelism. I that have a heart for evangelism to come alongside and and to encourage the evangelism of their work as well. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So what we do, what we do, uh, you know, our ministry, wherever we go, it's pretty much the same. It doesn't change sure. whether it's here or there. Mm -hmm. And as far as how you are supported, is there, do you receive funding? Are you supported mm -hmm. by, mm -hmm. you know, individuals or by a church organization? How, how are you funded? Both. Like mm -hmm. churches and individuals mm -hmm. have helped to send us. Yeah, we can, you know, God, God needs all of us to do the Great Commission. Yeah. And without partners and churches, we couldn't have done what we've been able to do. We yeah. couldn't have gone, we couldn't have lived overseas. We're, you know, we um, were really thankful for our partners. And we believe actually that, you know, as we go, they go with us. And, you know, some people may never leave, you know, their hometown. But you can all go all through the world with your prayers and mm -hmm. with your giving, mm -hmm. you know, and, and be um, very effective. Yeah, so, f <coughs> so to support uh, Christian mission work, you know, as Alexandra has said, is number one, you know, we, we, they need their, your prayer support, you know, the prayers that the Holy Spirit is working and empowering them, opening up those doors, those opportunities to witness. But also, uh, as far as financial support, they always need that as well. And so if you would be interested in partnering with them and supporting their mission work, you know, we certainly have all the information you know, that we'll put up on the screen right now. Well, I just want to say to the two of you, well, it's just so nice that you are here, and that you could take the time with Thank us. You. Thank you. And how long are you here before you go back to uh, France? At least through the end of this month. The end yeah. of the month, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and you've been off for how long? We've been gone from France since the end, since the end of uh, June. Okay, so a little furlough leave yeah, then. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, God be with you, and thank you for being a part of our program, to be on our program today. And I want to thank all of you for joining us as well.